Hello, just a minute. I'm going to be sitting this way with my book. Okay. Okay. In 4-H, we honor and respect all domestic animals, poultry, bees, and the plant world around us. This story, Forest Child, demonstrates how such caring can transfer over to all life and enrich our world. Even though this is a book of fiction, and we all know you give wild animals their space, it presents a gentle, tender message very timely in our world of today. I hope you enjoy it. This book is by Marnie McKee and illustrated by Scott Benville. And I used to read this book to my classes when I taught school. Because a lot of the children I taught lived in the city and they really didn't get out into the woods like you people are lucky enough to do. The sleepy sun began to slide down the rosy curve of sky, and as her light turned to gold, a child came into the forest alone. There's a piloted woodpecker and squirrels. You have to look very closely because each picture has little animals in it. Hearing the sound of a stranger, the owl awoke and blinked its eyes. Who, it asked, are you? But the child did not tell his name. I'm lost, he cried. Won't someone help me find my way home? The owl hooted in reply. You must leave the forest. Go. Humans come only to catch and kill us. And you are one of them. You must go. Go away. Look at that scary face. That's a great horned owl. It's the official bird of Alberta. A harsh cold wind began to blow. The forest itself came alive with sounds. Now look carefully in that picture and you'll see lots of little animals and big animals. The mumbling, grumbling, growling, low sounds scared the child and he shivered. All around him, dark, unblinking eyes watched through a curtain of trees. He must run. But where, where would he go? Suddenly, from deep in the forest, the child heard a cry. He stood still and listened. Someone was calling for help, but who? The child began to run. On quick bare feet, he followed the sound until he reached the brook. See the otter? Near the water's edge, he saw a rabbit caught in a hunter's trap. The child knelt down. Don't be afraid, he crooned. Be still. Soon, soon you'll be free. And gently he pulled apart the prongs that held the little rabbit captive. The rabbit shook itself, and as it quickly hopped away, the mumbling, grumbling, growling stopped. The harsh, cold wind grew still, and a hush fell over the forest. The child held his breath, looked up, all around him were animals, creatures of every kind, forming a circle of feather and fur. No longer fierce and glaring, now their eyes were kind. Did you see some of the animals? The moose and the bear, the wolf, deer. This little lion cub, I think he got misplaced because we don't have lions in Canada, do we? Don't be afraid, said the wolf. We will not harm you. You have become one of us. Yes, said the brook, indeed. Won't you come in for a swim? I'll wash your face and cool your feet. The child jumped in. A family of fish swam by his side. A turtle tickled his toes. The child paddled and splashed about until he saw that the sky had changed from gold to gray. See the little turtle? There's a frog back there. His eyes grew wide. It's dark, he said. I've got to get home. I know my mother will worry. Who, said the kindly owl, will guide the child. Who will help him find his way home? I will, declared the eagle. My eyes are keen, but the journey is long. The child has wandered far. Tonight he must stay here with us. At dawn, I will lead him home. 
eagles are very wise birds. Who then, said the owl, will carry a message to say that the child is safe? I will, said the dove. Let me. My wings are swift, my voice is sweet. I'll fly to those who love the child and tell them he is safe. Very well, said the owl, but the child will need his supper soon. Who will give him something to eat? Let me, said the bear, let me. I'll share the ripe red berries that grow on prickly vines and the honey hidden in the hollow of trees. And I, said the squirrel, flicking his tail, will show him where to find some seeds sweet and good to eat. After the child had eaten all that he could eat, the kindly owl asked, who will play with the child until it's time to go to sleep? Let me, said a deer with velvet eyes, I'll run with him, we'll race, and when he's tired, I'll let him ride, his arms around my neck. The deer and the child romped and ran until the sky grew dark. And look, there's the little bunny. Who said the owl very softly. Who now will give the child some light, for he's a stranger in our wood. Let us, said the moon and stars together. We'll shine our light through forest leaves and chase the shadows away. The owl nodded, rustling its wings. And who will make a bed? Soon the child will need to sleep. Already his eyelids are drooping. Please, said the rabbit, let me. I'll gather flowers and bits of grass. I'll weave a mat beneath the oak with pillows made from moss. There's a little chipmunk. Yes, said the owl, very well. And who will keep watch with me till morning summons the sun? Let me, said the wolf, I'll help, for you are wise, but I am strong. Together we'll stand guard. The child will know that he is safe. And so the child lay down to rest. The moon and stars cast patterns of light all around him. The animals gathered close, and each one said good night. You know, I was wrong. That wasn't a little lion cub. That was a lynx. We do have lynx in. I have a lynx mistake. Yeah. So that's okay. The author didn't make a mistake. Who said the owl whispering now? Who will sing a lullaby? No need, no need, the nightingale trilled. Our precious child is already fast asleep. Do you have a bunny stuffy? No? Did you like that book? I think that's a really nice book, isn't it? Thank you for listening.